If you need assistance with your credit, text CREDIT to 702-778-2000. The Credit Show Podcast with Harry Jacobs starts now. Credit card debt is at an all-time high right now. Spending is out of control. There is $986 billion in consumer credit card debt right now. Since the end of 2021, so a little over a year ago, credit card balances have risen by $130 billion or something crazy. The record was in 2019 at $927 billion. It's obvious, you know, it's just a matter of time before we see those balances up over a trillion. I'm surprised they're not there at, at the moment, actually. And there was obviously a drop during COVID when, you know, money was coming in and you couldn't really leave the house. We were stuck. By the way, the top five states from from worst to first for credit card debt, Texas, Rhode Island, New Jersey, and New York, and then Connecticut at number one. The data on the percentage of consumers that carry balances is pretty crazy. Over 50% of consumers are what they call revolvers. There are two types of folks that use credit cards, revolvers and transactors. Revolvers are folks that let these balances you know, revolve and roll over time. Transactors just use their cards, get the points, and pay them. The goal of the credit card companies is simple. They want you to spend. I'm going to tell you something ridiculous that they want as well, and you're going to say, oh, it makes sense. No, I wasn't thinking about it like that. But number one goal is for you to spend, spend, spend. They're counting on at least half of you to not pay your bill every month. Put everything you can. Listen, they don't make any money off the transactors. The cash that they make comes from the revolvers, from those that leave a balance. Listen, you can go into a a credit card, a new credit card, thinking, I'm going to pay it off each month. But there are countless studies that show that it just doesn't work that way. You know, it's it's credit versus debit, the delayed loss of the money that you spend, right? If you are thinking about, and I say this to people all the time, when they're building and rebuilding their credit after bankruptcy, use a credit card to build your credit. Use it as you would use cash. Think about it like it's a debit card. By the way, there are not, uh, you know, there are not a whole lot of sexy offers coming out from credit card companies these days. The average offer for cards, like interest rate wise, is about twenty percent. You know, unlike a mortgage or a car loan, those are accounts that are installment loans. Those accounts have, uh, you know, a beginning, a middle, and an end where nothing changes payment wise. Credit cards are a door to open ended debt. There exists no standard repayment plan with a credit card. No deadlines to keep you on track other than the minimum payment. That token minimum payment each month. You're free to mail in as much or as little as you want. As long as you make that minimum payment, you're in good shape. Turns out that a lot of people do just the bare minimum. We know this. Only a quarter to a third of credit card users pay their bills in full every month. Most Americans carry a balance and and research shows that a surprising number of them pay close to the minimum each month even when it's clear they could easily get out of that debt faster and save a ton of money in interest and payments and all that and and making the minimum payment is you know it's just a tool this is you know for lack of a better way to put it calibrated to extract as as much profit from a consumer as possible by the credit card companies over the past decades, most credit card companies have tweaked their formulas, you know, to lower and lower those payments. What can we do to help consumers? All right? That's the guys that's under. What can we do to help you? Well, instead of paying 5%, you can pay 2%. And that's what it is, right? It used to be 5% of your balance had to be paid. Now it's down to 2%. Listen, ultimately, they want you to go to, to some default. They want you to miss a payment. So that they can charge you more interest on on what you owe. That's what they want. Don't default, but miss a payment and then get back on track. Lower minimums in terms of payment. Lower minimum payments means higher balances. That's all that means. 
They may not spell it out that way, but that's what it is. Card issuers would absolutely prefer if a customer drew out the repayment process for as long as possible because it's more money. Listen, the government tried to, to help. They've tried to interject. In 03, you know, regular, 20 years ago, regulators banned the practice of setting the rates so low that if people follow the minimum payment, it would be impossible to get out of debt. Tried it then. And then in, in 09, the, the Card Act, it forced card issuers to print boxes on people's statements, which explained to them how long it would take to become debt-free from that credit card depending upon how much they were paying. Part of Dodd-Frank, as I recall. Credit card debt is the priciest kind of debt that you can have. And and anyone that knows anything, from, from Dave Ramsey to, you know, at, at that end to me at, at, at my end, I would tell you get rid of it as quickly as possible. I always say get rid of it because because of credit score purposes. But 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 logically I, I agree with, you know, Ramsey. And and I it just is a matter of principle to to be paying these companies that are making billions on us at every turn to pay them more when when you could make it painful for yourself and 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 pay yourself first. There was a guy that was kind of a mentor of sorts for me when I was a kid. I remember you know back where I grew up. And and he would say to me when you get paid pay yourself first. And and if you owe money, get rid of that. Make it painful for yourself if you need to. And and it you know his words have have stuck with me for years. Pay yourself first, meaning put some money away. And, and get rid of any debts that you owe that are costing you more than they should. You know, ultimately, as I look at what I do for a living and doing this show, I think about his words often. I have no idea if he knows what I'm doing now. That was when I was a kid, you know, 15, 14 years old or something. But he was smart. There are two intertwined explanations for what's happening with here. So some of this can be blamed on, you know, just financial illiteracy. And I've spoken at length on on kids and credit and, and even adults on credit. Not enough people know what the minimum payment shouldn't, you know, that it shouldn't be used as a rule of thumb. A lot of people don't have guidance that they need to know what to do and what to pay. The statements are easily misleading. That minimum payment, you look at that and go, oh, the minimum I have to do is this. How many people get by in life just doing the bare minimum to get by? Oh, I used to hear from teachers in school once in a while that would say to my parents, oh, Dr. and Mrs. Jacobs, Harry, it would be great if he would just apply himself and not do the minimum. <laughs> if I had five bucks for every time I heard that, I wouldn't be sitting here blabbing about credit to you right now, I suppose. That, by the way, these, you know, this, this process of putting the minimum on a credit card statement is, is a, an effect called anchoring bias. The mere presence of a minimum payment on a credit card bill reduces how much people think that they can pay. By the way, when the minimum payment, there's a study that showed that when the minimum payment was hidden, people would pay 70% more. This is that secret psychological genius of the minimum payment that the credit cards do. And I'm glad they were forced in 09 to, you know, as part of the Card Act to actually tell you how long it would take you to get out of debt, but it took us a long time to get there. It doesn't help things, though. Look where we are, almost a trillion dollars. Pay that credit card debt. Get rid of it. Keep your balances at 10%. Keep your scores as high as they can be. It's a big part of it. You've been listening to The Credit Show podcast with Harry Jacobs. If you need assistance with your credit, text CREDIT to 702-778-2000. 